In this lecture, we're going to start looking at some different kinds of motion than the kinds of motion that we looked at before. Um, and in order to introduce this, what I want to do is look back at what we did before so we can see how the new stuff will be different. So up to this point, without really being explicit about it, we have been considering the motion of particles. Um, now the word particle probably makes you think a lot of different things, and we use it in a few different ways. So what I mean specifically when I say particles here is that all parts of the object move the same way. All right, and particle motion is particularly nice because then we don't have to be explicit about which thing we're looking at. If we consider a car, for instance, like this, they don't have to say, okay, well, am I measuring the location of the center of the car, or am I measuring the front of the car, or am I measuring the top of the car? It doesn't really matter if I draw, say, a position versus time graph for that um, object. All the parts are doing the same thing, um, unless I look at like the wheels or something, which would be a little more complicated. Okay, so we can, for the most part, treat a car as a particle because all the parts of the car are doing the same thing. Um, it's the same basic idea if we consider a ball that's thrown through the air or, you know, any of the other types of things that, that we've looked at. Um, but now we want to consider cases that could be more complex than just a particle. So maybe different parts of um, an object would be doing different things. Okay, so the easiest way to introduce that is to have multiple particles. All right, so if we have um, several particles in the same um, region, like this, each one could be doing something different. So maybe this one has a velocity this way and this one has a velocity this way. That one might be like that. Okay, and each particle could have a different velocity, be going different speeds in different directions. All right, so in principle, the way to study the situation with many particles is just to treat each particle independently and then see what happens. Um, that can be pretty tricky, though, because maybe the particles are colliding with each other, or maybe they are exerting some sort of other forces on each other, um, and so they may not move in a simple way. They ha may have a more complicated um, behavior. Um, but this sort of model allows us to consider situations like, for instance, a gas. Right, so what is a gas but a whole bunch of mo molecules that are able to all move around in various ways? So you might imagine a cloud where like one part of the cloud is moving like this and another is moving like this, um, and that's perfectly allowed. If we think of that as millions of particles, then we just treat them all independently, um, plus whatever interactions they have. Uh, the last kind of motion that we're going to consider actually comes up next chapter. Um, and so this is, um, for instance, a solid object. Here, I'll draw a cylinder. Um, we'll actually be able to treat this as um, a motion that is like a particle um, for some special spot on that object, but then the um, object might also be rotating around that. Okay, so we'll be able to treat this as um, motion of the center, which will have a special name for that center, um, and then rotation around the center. Okay, so this particular type of object is called a rigid body because all the parts are going to um, move in a way that is related to each other. So if you know how one part moves, that'll kind of tell you how the rest of the parts are moving, but they're not all doing exactly the same thing in the same way the car does. If you drew like the X position as a function of time for the car versus for a point on the like tumbling cylinder, you might get a totally different um, result.